Hi, today I want to talk to you about uh, what I did to modify um, my OptiSpark. I, I'm kind of a Corvette, not really a Corvette guy, I'm a Mopar guy. I uh, worked for Chrysler for 32 years and in those 32 years I spent a lot of it, about 17 of it, doing recalls, which involves fixing problems like this. So I got kind of a unique skill set and I want to use that to kind of show you what I did to possibly uh, increase the life of your OptiSpark, uh, the, the, you know, the fail, cut the failure rate, and just see if we can make a better product. So what I did, so what I start with is I bought a, 19, it's a 1993 Corvette. Um, when I went to get it, it, it ran okay, it wasn't bad, but it ran like it had a cam in it. It, it, it would lope <clears throat> and carry on and this and that. So I got the car home, and like any good, uh, Mechanic, first place to go is YouTube, and everybody pointed towards the OptiSpark, the OptiSpark, the OptiSpark. It's the OptiSpark. So I'm like, oh, what is this OptiSpark? So I kind of researched that, and I said, okay. So I took my OptiSpark out, and let me show you what I found. Here's the, strip, here's the cap. Nothing really bad there. But then I get into the, the guts of it, and look at the corrosion on this thing. So that made me think, wow, what's going on here? We got a real problem here. Um, there was moisture in, inside here, there was moisture all over and oil and it was just a mess. So I said, well, I found my smoking gun. This is, this is definitely bad. So I did some more research and found out that, uh, Chevrolet and Pontiac and Buick did it differently. They didn't have the exact same, they both used OptiSpark, but one was called a vented and one was called unvented. Chevrolet used the unvented, which was really vented, but it just had three little holes in the bottom that just naturally let air in and out, which really didn't do anything. And the Buick and the um, Pontiac, they actually had a vacuum hose that hooked to it, and then they had a, a makeup air hooked to it, so it would constantly flow fresh air through to keep this corrosion from happening. So I thought, well, hey, this is an easy fix. I'll just get the... Uh, the Buick and the uh, Pontiac parts. Well, that didn't work either because of the drive on the back. This is called a spline drive. And the Buick and the Oldsmobile, or not Oldsmobile, Buick and the Pontiac used what was called a pin drive. So in order to switch over to that, you would have to buy a new timing cover case and all this other stuff and yada, yada, yada. It was way too complicated. So that, that wasn't really a good option. So I started researching. And well, if you got a lot of money, you can go with the torque head system, which is a really, really nice system. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful system, but it's like $2,000. And it will get you, you know, individual coils. It puts you in the LS uh, system, and you can do all the all the tuning and all that, which is great. If you got the money, hey, that's the way to go. But hey, us Mopar guys, we're cheap, okay? We like to do things for as little as possible. So what I thought was, hey, um, this problem existed in 92, 93, 94 Chevrolets. 95, Chevy switched over to the Pontiac Buick setup. So in order for the Chevrolet uh, engineer to, to make that change, he had to first, because I work in the industry, so I know, he had to first present a case that says, hey, we got a problem, this is the problem. So they're admitting they got a problem. And then they have to do testing and have a, a fix. And the fix was this vented system. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I changed my non-vented OptiSpark to a vented OptiSpark. It's a little, we're gonna do, we're gonna just basically copy what they did on the Buick and the uh, Pontiac system. So here's, here's what I did. Start with, you're gonna need a few parts. This is the, probably the key thing. These little, they're called connectors. If you can, you can kind of see that. It's, it's got a nice little flare on it, real nice. Here's the part number on it. Now, I don't know, I looked it up online and I had a hard time finding anything like it. Now, I got this from, it was Do It Best Hardware here in Lake Havasu. And I looked at Ace Hardware, they didn't have anything like that, but maybe your hardware does. Maybe you can find it online. Maybe you can find something that's as good or does the same thing, but that's what they are right there. You get like five in a bag for like three bucks. So it's a pretty good deal. So here's, here's what I did. 
I'm gonna use my old OptiSpark just to show you what I did. Um, first, we're gonna put it in a vise like this. And there are three holes on the bottom. I already glued this on, so that's just for future to show you what I did. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, this is a number 12 bit. Um, you're gonna put a piece of tape on it. You only want about three eighths of an inch sticking through for a drill stop. And you're gonna come up underneath here and you're gonna drill out the outer ones on both sides. Now I'm not gonna show you how to drill a hole because I'm sure you know how to drill a hole, but you go in to the, uh, basically the three eighths depth. I think I drilled this one out. I can't, yeah, yeah, right there. So you go to the three eighths depth, you drill them both out, okay? Then you're gonna take these little, these little brass fittings on the two outer ones, you see I already glued that one in and the other one is gonna go in like that. So when you're done, you're gonna have two of them glued in just like that. These are gonna be your return air, your makeup air, okay? So once you got those glued in, I used um, this JD, JD Weld, the, the quick set, because it sets really fast. If you use the regular JD Weld, you're gonna to have to wait a day for that stuff to dry and you don't wanna wait that long. So that's what you're gonna do there. Glue those two on, Let that while that's drying, we're gonna go over and we're gonna modify the uh, distributor cap. Again, on your new one, you're gonna to have to take it off. There's three screws that, that hold it on. One, two, three screws. Um, you're gonna need this. It's, a, it's a e, called an E20. Now I got, the, I got the whole set for like 10 bucks at uh, Harbor Freight, and this is the one you need. Uh, if you can just find the one that you need, great, but that's what you're going to need to take that distributor off, no, the distributor cap. Once you get the cap off, you're going to drill another hole. So when it sits in the car, it sits like this, okay? This is your coil wire. Just next to your coil wire, you're going to drill, a, using your number 12 again, you're going to drill a small hole in, and you're going to see that hole is going to come right through here, okay? And then you're going to glue one of these, another one of these little connectors on, kind of like that. I mean, angle it out a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna give you an exact dimension. This isn't main bearings we're doing here. You just wanna make it far enough away from this edge so you can get a hose on, far away from this edge so you can get a hose on. So just in this corner, you wanna basically get through there. So when you, and don't put this in too deep because if you put it in too deep, you know, you could, you could get into trouble. So you want it just about, so it's just like that. So it's just sticking through. Again, mix up some JB Weld, glue it in. Good to go. Let that dry. Now, um, once you get it all put together and dry, you need some hose. I, I got my hose from, um, from O'Reilly's. It is 730 seconds is the size. Let me open this up. I guess I should have opened this before we started the video, but This is, this is the hose. It's just seven thirty seconds. Nothing, nothing, it's six feet. You're gonna probably need three of these. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect this to this little hose right here. Take a little uh, um, tie, little uh, tie, uh, plastic tie, put it around there and use it like a clamp to clamp it on. So you're gonna have two of these hanging off, one on the, one side, one on the other side. Now, while you've got this apart, there are two screws to hold your rotor on. Now, just from the research I did, people are saying that these screws come loose. So while you got it apart, this is normally on here like this. This goes on, you know, basically like this. While you got it apart, take one screw at a time, put a little drop of Loctite on and tighten them back up. Now, these aren't head bolts. You don't have to torque them to 100 foot pounds with a half inch breaker bar. Just Make sure they're tight. Make sure you put a little Loctite on. Again, it's 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 uh, belts and suspenders. I've never seen one come apart, but then what do I know? I'm kind of new to all this anyway. So once you get it all together, everything's glued, dried, and you go to put it all back together. Again, this is just the old, I'm just putting this together to show you. Put your screws back in. And anyway, it don't matter. I think it goes like this, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, like that. 
put it all back together, put your screws back in. Now you're going to have hose coming off here, two hoses coming off here. Now, I, I've seen a lot of uh, people that struggle with getting this back on the car. So I'm going to just tell you how I did it. It may be right, it may be wrong, but this is what I did. First off, take your old one. Pull the gear out. Okay? There's a, there's a spline. Uh, it's, it's a centering spline. It's, it's like the one off. I think I marked this one. Well, you can't really see it. But put a mark on it where it is. Go back to the car and work it until you get it to go on. And if you mark both sides, you'll know exactly where that spline is. And then just take a felt marker and put a mark on your timing cover so you know where that centering spline is. Now when you go to put this together, you know exactly where to clock it and it'll go right on. It, it should literally just fall right on, okay? But before you put it all back together, there's something you need to, you need to do. You need, the, the, this thing is supposedly not waterproof. So once you get it all back together, get yourself some 100% silicone clear and just go and just take some on your finger. Now we're not frosting your cake here, but just take it on your finger and just put a little, you know, uh, coating over all the seams where water could possibly come in. That way, hey, I don't know if it helps, but it can't hurt, okay? And, we, and you want it to look good, so you don't, don't use like black silicone or glue or something nasty. You know, make it nice. That way it, it's as waterproof as you can get it. All right, so again, before you install it, this is the time to find out if you've got any oil leaks. If you've got an intake manifold leaking, now's the time to change it. If you've got a, uh, uh, the, the seal for the water pump, if it's leaking, this is the time to change it. If you've got uh, the crank seal, if it's leaking, now is your time to change it. Oil pan gasket, whatever is leaking, now is the time to fix it because you've got to give this OpiSpark the ultimate place to live where it's not going to get coated with anything. So when you're doing your removing your OpiSpark, if, if you don't know how, there's other videos on YouTube that will show you exactly how to get it off. Um, I always say take the throttle body off, take the water pump off, and then you can get right down to your OpiSpark to get it out and put it back. So definitely replace the seals. Look for any other oil leaks. This is the time to fix it. You already got the coolant drained. You got to pull the intake. It's a no-brainer at this point. It's just the bolts and a few rubber hoses and it comes right off. But there's one other modification we're going to do before we put it all back together. And that's on this water pump. Okay, is they all, this is what drives the water pump right here. Okay, and this is the weep hole. Well, lordy, lordy, if, if that little connector that you bought, look at that, fits right in there. So what you're going to do is put some JB Weld on that, put some JB Weld on this, but always rough these up first, too. I forgot to tell you that. Just take a little bit of sandpaper so that JB Weld has something to bite onto, and just glue this on, just barely, just in there, you know, like that. Let that dry. And what you're going to do is you're going to hook a hose to that, and run it down the side so that if this ever does leak, it's not gonna leak all over your OptiSpark. It's gonna leak down on the ground. Still have a problem with your water pump, but at least you didn't kill your OptiSpark. So that's that's what you gotta do there. So the nice thing about this whole modification is that it's pretty much invisible. You can't really see it on the car. So if you're in, a, in an area where there's like emission checks. Well, the first thing you do is a visual inspection. If you've got hoses running all over the place, they're gonna flunk you, and you don't want that. So what you, what you do is you, is you run your one hose up here, up to the intake manifold. Your two that come out the bottom, let me show you on the car what I did. I ran one down, I ran one down the, the one side of the car, brought it around the side, now there's a really, uh, there's a really good uh, tube that runs right down there for the power steering. And you can strap using tie straps, very loosely tie strap it to that tube. Don't over tighten those tie straps because you'll pinch off that hose. So I ran it over to here, brought it around, and I just laid that hose in there and I put a, a fuel filter on the end of it. I cut the end off so the air goes in here, goes in the outside of the fuel filter, and then in and then into the intake. You don't want to, you don't want to just, uh, let it suck in dirty air because that's not really good either, okay? And I cut the end off so there wouldn't be any restriction there. And you want it to run from the outside in so you can look at the filter and see if it's ever dirty. So every time you change oil, you just check it. So I just lay them in here, tuck them back under here, and nobody sees nothing. You don't have to answer a bunch of questions, what's all that all about and all that good stuff. 
The other hose is right here. It comes up from the OptiSpark, comes around here. Now, you're gonna have to find some kind of vacuum source to you know, apply vacuum. And for me, since I don't have an EGR and I had an EGR delete plate, I just drilled a hole through there and picked up the vacuum off of there so I get a nice distribution of vacuum that way. And you also have to put in a one-way check valve because that's what they did, um, what GM did. And I'm assuming that's so that there's no fumes floating back down into the distributor because if you get gas fumes in a distributor, bad things are going to happen. You know that. So that's kind of how it is. If you look at the car, you, you basically say there's nothing been done to it. Now, I've had this system on like this for about a thousand miles and it has been absolutely flawless. That's not to say it works. That's not to say it doesn't work. All it says it's worked for the first thousand miles because I live in Blake Havis and nothing stays wet in this town for more than about 10 minutes because the humidity is so low here in the middle of the desert. So hopefully somebody will try this and comment back and tell me how it worked for them in a more humid environment. And we'll see if that doesn't make a difference. The other thing you might have to do is your uh, minimum air idle, you may have to turn that down because if you're pulling in vacuum through the distributor, engine's getting another vacuum source, which is going to make the idle go up. So that's just a turn of the screw, not hard to do. Turn that idle down a little bit and you should be in good shape. But that's basically what I did. I basically copied what GM did for Buick and Pontiac and did that for my unvented system. So I've created a vented system that should work good. Now on these, the other thing on these, don't, do not hook this to the makeup air for the PCV system because you may suck up some oil fumes. You don't want to do that. Nor do you want to put like a K&N type filter that has oil on it because you don't want to draw any oil fumes into that. So that sensor gets uh, messed up. So that's what I did. That's that's how I got here. It's, it's, it's really not that hard. It's pretty simple. Basic tools. The hardest thing, again, is is getting these little connectors. Oh, the one thing, the other thing I forgot to tell you, that center hole, I just took a nail, cut the end of a nail off and plugged it off. You can use whatever you want. You can put a screw in it. You can just fill it with some uh, JB Weld, but we're not gonna use the center one because your crank uh, damper uh, hub is right there. So you can't really use that. So one's gonna go off to the one side. One's gonna go off to the other side. Um, as you can see, I got a, I've got another one over here too. But that might have been one. Sitting right there, all nicely tucked away. So you got one on each side. Be careful on that side so you don't get, you know, route up so that you don't get into the belt, because if that hose gets into the belt, that's not going to be pretty either. You don't want that. Um, you're going to have your one way check valve, find a vacuum source, whatever you feel comfortable with, and hopefully you'll have as good luck as I do with uh, your now vented, power vented. Uh, Chevrolet that didn't cost you but I don't know 20 bucks to do I mean it's it's worked for me here let me show you how the car starts I mean this car was a hard starter it ran you off with all kinds of problems guys said oh you gotta step on the gas to get the start <laughs> so it, it's worked for me I don't know what to tell you you know if, if if you, it might be a bad idea. I, it, I think it's a great idea, you know. I think it, it's going to work. I think it's going to give you the same effect that the Buick and Pontiac people have enjoyed all this time. And the 95s and 96s are already that way. So GM has admitted there's a problem. If this was today, this would have been a recall. The only question would have been emissions or safety. So, but that's water with the bridge. They're not going to recall They're not going to recall a 35-year-old car, that's for sure, a 30-year-old car. So that's kind of where we're at. I, I hope this video helps you out. Uh, leave any comments you've got below. I'm going to do some other videos on uh, the door panels, how they're coming apart on top. Again, nobody's gotten to the root cause. I've watched a lot of those videos and, well, they need some help there. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to do something on the cooling system because there's a whole other video on that. So look for some more videos to come. So I, I, again, I hope this helps you out. And if you have any comments or you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me a text. Thank you. Have a great day.